I just wanted to just very quickly uh, give a shout out to Jen that just presented and also the Westchester University. It's so nice to see what you guys are doing with City Engine and all the tools. And you might remember that I uh, did the demo um, of Arches Urban uh, yesterday. So another, yet another tool where you can make designs. <laughs> um, so um, we see that we, we have a lot of like gateways that you can approach that with a lot of different ways. And what I'm trying to explain you here now with my little lightning talk is how can you actually integrate all what you're doing now in City Engine together with RTS Urban. And um, uh, also Camille is one of my colleagues in the City Engine team uh, in Zurich, so we're working hard on this integration. Um, so let's quickly recap um, on RTS Urban. So one of the very powerful things that you can do with RTS Urban is that you can very quickly um, design different scenarios. Um, so you can also copy your scenarios and just quickly change a couple buildings and see what that means, evaluate that both visually. So uh, when I put in another scenario here, so we immediately see what does that mean visually, but we can also analyze what that means um, for those capacity indicators that are calculated based on the space use type. So this is um, one thing that Arches Urban is very um, powerful with. But we cannot only design those scenarios very quickly, we can also um, compare them, as I've already said, to not only to each other, but also how do they fit into uh, their surrounding context into the cityscape. And um, we can evaluate the impact it has on the rest of the city. We can present those scenarios to citizens and receive feedback on what they think about what we've designed. So this is um, where Arches Urban is very strong in um, at the moment. And, um, to produce those 3D models, we're actually using exactly the same um, procedural modeling technology that is inherent to City Engine. So those buildings that you see here that have been produced on the web in Arches Urban use the same rules as you know from City Engine. Now, you might wonder, so why do we actually need City Engine then? So now we can do City Engine on the web, so why would I even need City Engine? But City Engine is very powerful when it comes to details, when we uh, move from those um, hypothetical massing models down to really where do I plant my trees, where do I have my windows on um, my buildings, how do I want them to look like more from the architectural design. So I can really go and refine my designs in City Engine, use drawing and powerful sketching tools, apply my own custom rules, and um, do other calculations that would produce uh, would take too long on the web, such as we, for example, calculate your edge information on parcels. So, for example, we assess if it's a front parcel or a front edge or a side edge on the parcel, and we run that on 100,000 parcels pretty quickly in City Engine. But enough uh, talking for now. I'm going to switch to um, a quick demo where I just um, want to show you how um, that will work. So. First, I'm just going to go uh, to Arches Urban, and this is um, the city of Boston. You might recognize that data set from the plenary um, at, from UC last summer. And I made um, this Dor Dorchester Avenue plan um, here, and I made a few scenarios that will load in um, here. <coughs> Sorry, still my voice. Um, <clears throat> and you see that we have here now not only those blue buildings um, from Urban, but also uh, put in a few uh, more detailed buildings. I have a couple more scenarios, and I can quickly just um, switch through them. I can see my indicators updating while I'm going through those scenarios. And you see um, I can also go and add more detailed models, such as this um, imaginary vision of the Dorchester Avenue with those nice little trees everywhere. Um, that Pascal made. And <clears throat> now I'm going to go to City Engine, and here you see exactly um, the same um, scenario that I just opened. It's scenario number one from here. Let me quickly go back here. So you see I have those um, buildings up front. So what I did here is um, I went to City Engine and I imported this plan to City Engine with all of my scenarios. And now I can go in and actually work on those. So I can go in and, for example, say, OK, so this um, little tower here, I want to actually have it a lot higher. And what you see on the left side are the shapes. And on 
the right side are the models where I apply my custom rules, so they update um, immediately. So I know you all know sketching tools, I'm not going to go too much in detail there, but now <coughs> if I'm done with my refinement of the designs, I can bring that back to Urban. And I can do that by just publishing those models back to the urban data model. So I'll do that now. And what it does in the background, it creates a scene layer and attaches it directly to my scenario. So we'll, so we'll just finish in another second, and it's done. And now it's already back in urban. What I can also do here in City Engine, I can open urban from City Engine. For example, if I want to import a plan, so let me do that. So this is an embed version now of Urban. And if I open my plans here, I can see I have the same plan here. And now let's zoom into here. And you might remember what I changed here with this little tower. And it's already there. And there you go. Now we have the little tower, and it's done. So it's really quick um, to go back and forth between City Engine and ArcGIS Urban. Go back to my presentation. So I just showed you this um, synchronization between Urban and City Engine. And if you've never used City Engine, I just want <clears throat> to quickly explain why it's very powerful to use it also in the context um, of urban planning here. Because City Engine <clears throat> can not only um, have those, we can also um, import all sort of 3D formats to City Engine. So if you have data in other formats, you can streamline them through City Engine and bring them into urban like that. You can not only import 3D formats, but actually also um, 2D maps, such as OpenStreetMap. And then with that data, you can go beyond City Engine. And Jan has also showed that with the VR stuff. So you can export to other 3D formats. You might have people working with other software. And you can also do um, export to game engines and make VR experiences out of that, which is really cool. And as Jan mentioned, people are really excited about that, and we are too. Um, because in game engines, you can do so much more than you can do on the web. And I just want to give you a little teaser of one of those um, scenarios that I showed earlier. And um, this has been done in Unreal Engine. So um, we see the same models here with the little trees on the roof and so on. And we have here <coughs> what is really nice if we, that we can add um, all the lightning. It looks very realistic or more or less realistic. Maybe the building's not so much, but we have the sky that looks realistic. We have the sun, the lighting. We can make those fly-through videos, those renderings for people to see what does it mean, um, those kind of projects. It, also, when I go to the pedestrian perspective in this case, I can add very detailed street furniture. Um, I can add materials to my buildings, for example, uh, windows that reflect accordingly. I can make those really nice kind of um, um, with the nice sky images to show to people. And um, that's it from my side. If you have any questions about this, if you have ideas, projects, um, if you have your city engine models, you would like to show them in urban, please come um, talk to me. And I think we'll leave it to that, and we're all going to have lunch. <laughs>